scrolling through your phone again I used to do the same thing until I decided that enough was enough. In today's video, I want to help you reclaim your time and share how I stopped being glued to my phone all the time. Before we dive in, I want to make it clear that this video is based on my personal experience. If you feel like your phone use is a serious problem or is affecting your mental health, please seek professional help. I'm not a psychologist and this video isn't a substitute for professional advice. For anyone worried about their phone use, I've included a link in the description to the Smartphone Compulsion Test, a quick tool that can help you assess your relationship with your phone. If you're concerned, this could be a great first step. With that said, let's get into the video. To start, I wanna talk about my phone obsession and how it transformed and improved over the years of my self-improvement journey. I think for me, there were three things that I experienced that I didn't like and that I wanted to change when it came to creating a healthy relationship with my phone. The first thing is that I would always check my phone first thing in the morning. And to be completely honest with you guys, I still struggle with it sometimes. When I wake up, the first thing I wanna do is not like yawn, stretch get out of bed no the first thing I want to do is just grab my phone and do something on my phone the second little thing little problem problemita is connected to my work because I work on social media and I would use my phone all the time to take pictures to take videos and obviously because of that I was glued to my phone people take a lot of pictures every single day right now because they want to capture and broadcast every moment Moment. But the funny thing is that it's been shown that when we do that, it actually becomes harder and harder to remember certain moments. And the third thing that I would experience very often, especially when I just moved abroad, was I felt very anxious without my phone. I call it the pacifier effect. You know, when little babies, they can't fall asleep without their pacifier because it has this soothing effect on them. And so my phone had this soothing effect on me. When I moved abroad, I found myself in a completely new environment. I was surrounded by new faces, new places, and a completely new language. When I moved abroad, I didn't speak any Spanish. Absolutely zero. And to be honest, it felt really overwhelming and I felt anxious and out of place in so many different situations. And in those moments, my phone became my safe space. I would use it to scroll on social media, to talk to my friends and family who lived in a completely different country, to watch YouTube videos for anything. Just holding my phone felt good. Being connected to the people I knew through my phone felt amazing. And it's dark again. <sighs> my phone was really like a digital pacifier to me and I always turned to it when I felt stressed or uncomfortable. And there were a lot of moments when I felt like that when I first moved abroad. And I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video can relate to me right now, especially in those times when we're experiencing something new and when we're feeling very stressed. Our phones can provide this instant access to entertainment, social connections, and obviously distractions. And it makes them a perfect place of comfort. I don't want to have this dependency that I only feel calm and relaxed when I'm holding my phone and doing something on my phone. The second important part that I really want to mention is the dopamine connection to all of this. Recently, I read the book How to Break Up with a Phone and I loved it a lot. It basically explains that when dopamine is released, it attaches to pleasure receptors in the brain and we experience pleasure. And so if a specific activity always makes us feel good, like doing something on our phones, we start connecting it to this dopamine release. And naturally we start engaging with this activity more and more, like being obsessed with your phone and wanting to use your phone all the time. And to make the situation even worse, the phones that most of you guys watching this video have are probably very fun to use. They're not like, you know, brick kind of phones with just like buttons to call and text. No, they're fun phones with a lot of colors, with a lot of social media apps, with a lot of things to do, to click on. You can call a lot of people, you can video call people. So the design of our phones and obviously of social media media also triggers this dopamine release. And all of these different cases, like different designs, different colors, different textures, it just feels good to hold our phones in our hands. And that makes us use our phones
phones more often, use social media more often, and eventually we get hooked. But don't worry, I probably mentioned a lot of scary, nerve-wracking things right now. I actually have a little system that helped me a lot overcome the three things I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Step one is identifying your triggers. Like what actually creates this whole process that you want to be glued to your phone, that you want to be use your phone all the time. For me, it was boredom and a lot of stress because when I moved abroad, in a lot of situations, I felt bored because I didn't know anyone in here. And so after work, I would just stay at home and not do anything because I didn't speak the language. I was too afraid to go outside and explore new places, meet new people. And so because of that, I felt very stressed and I felt very bored. And so that was the trigger for for me to use my phone, to use social media and spend hours and hours glued to my phone. The next step is finding alternatives. When you feel bored, instead of using your phone, what can you do? You feel bored, you feel stressed, but then we're going to change this next part. Instead of using your phone, you can do something else. And it's important to figure out what it is that you can do. I prefer to find alternatives, some other things you can do instead of just quitting using your phone cold turkey, because in those situations, a lot of people might experience a relapse that is said to be like, okay, I'm not using my phone anymore. I'm gonna quit cold turkey. I'm gonna quit using social media, but then what? What are you going to do in those situations when you feel bored and you feel stressed? Like you are going to feel bored and stressed. It's not possible to never ever feel bored and never ever feel stressed. Substitution is usually a much more reliable method than just relying on your willpower. It can be pretty risky to rely on your willpower to change your behavior sometimes. So what did I do? When I felt bored, I did one Thing differently. I went to the gym or I went bouldering, like I started a new hobby, bouldering recently, or I did yoga, anything active. Because for me, that really helps me to not feel bored anymore. Doing something active, going outside, taking a walk, maybe going to a new place, or obviously exercising. When I felt stressed, instead of using my phone and spending time on social media, a lot of time on social media, I started journaling. Just writing down all of my thoughts, everything I was feeling, everything I was experiencing. And by the time it was done, I honestly felt better. And I could wait a few days to talk to my therapist about everything that was bothering me. I do think that it's important to rethink our relationship with our phones just because there's so much data that supports this argument that we spend too much time on our phones and too much time on social media. I found a study by Global Web Index that showed that the average person spends around two hours and 31 minutes on social media each day. Young adults, particularly those aged 16 to 24, spend even more time, often up to three hours per day. It's a lot of time, honestly. And all of this time we could dedicate to something else, like learning a new skill, reading books, talking to our family and friends. One of the most effective tools I've discovered for managing my phone usage and building better habits, something that I mentioned in my last video, is Willstone. The screen time control app offers much more than just limits. What I love about it is how it empowers you to take control of your time and how it guides you towards healthier habits. Instead of simply restricting your screen time, it motivates you to earn more by engaging in productive activities. And I I want to say a huge thank you to Willstone for sponsoring a portion of this video. For example, you can categorize your apps into positive ones like Duolingo, Kindle, or educational podcasts, and distracting ones such as Instagram and TikTok. And then you can set specific limits for those distracting apps. If you try to open TikTok and find it locked, you will need to engage with positive apps first. Start an offline timer to do something without your phone or walk a certain number of steps to unlock extra screen time. Time. As you can see, this system reduces mindless scrolling and it also helps you incorporate healthy habits into your life. If I want more social media tonight, I know that I need to stay active and productive throughout the day. Personally, I found that using Willstone helps me maintain a balanced routine. Since I started using this app, I reduced my social media time by an average of one hour a day. This allowed me to reclaim seven hours a week and I can spend all of this time on learning and self 
improvement. I have also noticed a significant increase in my productivity. I can focus on my personal projects for an extra hour each day because of this structured approach that Willstone suggests. It prompts me to be more mindful of how I spend my time and it also rewards me for staying active and for studying. If you ever think I wish I had more time in the day, then this app is for you. You can check out the link in my description to download Willstone and start reclaiming your time today. Trust me, it's helped me stay on track and get more out of my day without feeling overwhelmed. Now let's move on to my step number three in my whole journey of stopping to be obsessed with my phone. And that step is all about setting boundaries. Unfortunately, in a lot of situations, that's the only thing that is going to work and that is going to work specifically for me. Like when I wake up in the morning, I need to set this boundary that I don't touch my phone in the first hour of waking up. Otherwise, I'm gonna still grab my phone and start using it. Maybe it sounds like you're being your own parent, but if that's the only thing that works, I think that's an amazing approach. You know, we set boundaries with other people all the time, like our family members, our partner, our friends, but why can't we set physical boundaries with our our phones, with technology. I know it's hard to do, but it's also hard to set boundaries with other people, but we still do that. And so I think it's really time to start setting boundaries with our phones as well. Okay, and finally, the step number four is understanding the habit loop. When I started learning more about that framework, I immediately understood why I was experiencing all of those things with my phone and what to do to overcome my phone obsession. The habit loop explains how habits work and it consists of three parts, a cue, a routine, and a reward. A cue is this trigger that starts the habit. It could be a feeling, a time of day, or a specific situation. For example, earlier I mentioned that for me, my two cues were the feeling of boredom and also when I felt stressed. So they started this whole process of me wanting to grab my phone, wanting to scroll on social media, wanting to spend hours, you know, on my phone. The routine is the behavior that follows the cue. Because we're talking about our phones today, the routine might be scrolling through social media or checking messages whenever you feel stressed or bored. To be honest, for me, my routine was mainly YouTube because I really like watching YouTube videos. And so every single time I felt bored or stressed, I would grab my phone and I would just scroll on YouTube, not even choosing the video to watch. Because in a lot of situations, I couldn't even find the video I wanted to watch. And so, you know, it's like this effect that also happens on Netflix. If you're looking for a movie that you wanna watch, you can spend like an hour, two hours, just choosing what you wanna watch instead of actually watching something. And then we move on to the reward. This is the benefit or satisfaction you get from completing the routine. So once I scrolled on YouTube, once I watched a few YouTube videos, I would get my reward. I would no longer feel bored and I would no longer feel stressed. So in my specific situation, I realized that feeling anxious was my cue. My routine was reaching for my phone, using my phone, and the reward was a sense of calm and distraction from my worries. And basically to break free from the habit loop, we have to think what parts of the habit loop we can influence. And for me, obviously I couldn't influence the way I was feeling. Again, sometimes in life, you're gonna feel anxious, you're gonna feel stressed and bored. What I could influence was my routine. What I did when I experienced all of those feelings. So instead of choosing the routine that I didn't like, I decided to do something else. I decided to use some calming activities like meditation, some breathing exercises, or maybe doing yoga or going for a short walk. The reward was the same because I started feeling more calm, but in a way the reward was even better because the long-term effects of meditating, of doing yoga, of walking, exercising are a lot more positive than the long-term effects of spending time on social media hours on end. I didn't have to rely on my phone anymore 
or I was doing something good for my body and for my mind. So again, just by changing one part of the loop, your routine, you can start creating healthier habits and still get the reward you need. I think it's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out Bullstone by clicking the link in my description. It's an amazing app that will help you control your screen time and also reward you for good activities. If you want to improve your relationship with social media apps like Instagram and TikTok, I highly recommend checking out this video right here. So click right here and I'll see you there.